Hey there, folks, and welcome to another episode of Craft Beer and Crypto. We're coming to you today with lots of stuff to talk about. There's a lot going on in the world. There's a lot of fun things that we've got sitting here in front of us that we want to discuss with you. But first and foremost, make sure that you go visit us at jkjdigitalassets.com. You know that's the location. That's where all the papers are. That's where all the information is. Lots of videos, lots of stuff for you to read and look at all things to continue your crypto education and help you down that path. Hey, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We know you're watching us on YouTube. It's right up there in the right hand corner. Smash that bad boy, subscribe to our channel. Come see us at Craft Beer and Crypto Podcast. You know you wanna know when it comes out. You don't wanna miss one. This is the exciting part of the week when the new podcast hits folks. So make sure you come, come check us out on those platforms. And as always, we like to throw some pictures up on Instagram too. We talk about a few things on there. So make sure you go see us at JKJ underscore digital underscore assets. Folks, we're back together again today. We got John, we got Javier here with us. And as you know, we always like to start off. We gotta, we gotta get primed up a little bit. You know, we've got what we wanna talk about. We've got our ideas that we just can't wait to throw out there and get to you. But first, we gotta have a little refreshment. We gotta have a little primer, you know. Get the vocal cords, <clears throat> get everything loosened up and ready to talk. And you know what? It's almost springtime. We're so ready for the warm weather. We're so ready for the sunshine. You know what I love when it's warm weather and sunshine? A nice blueberry beer. And today, that's what we've got. From our buddies up there in Maine, we've got a beautiful, what they call sweet tart. It's got a nice light mouthfeel. It's really blueberry. It finishes really smooth. It's a nice amber, just we're really even closer to a golden color when you're drinking it. And you know, I know a lot of people get turned off by sours. This is a barely got a little tartness to it, but when it comes with those blueberries, when you're sitting there, the boys up at Peak, they do a great job with their organic beer. And I'm telling you, this is one you don't want to miss. When it starts getting warm, this is what you want to have when you're sitting out on the deck. Oh, it's so good. So good. That blueberry <laughs> freshness just gets you going. I'm sitting here. I'm excited now. I'm ready. I'm ready. But you know what? I can't just launch yet. We got John over here. He has got an interesting, interesting beer from here in Richmond. What you got over there, bud? Yeah, this is a Richmond brewery. It's called Table. This one is new to me. I just I found it when we went to uh, Union Market down in Richmond today. I pulled this one out. It's uh, it's Top Pilsner. Uh, it's on the north side of Richmond, Top Pilsner. So if you like your Coors or Bud Lights and stuff like that, which I don't, but if you do, this is down that lane. It's more your middle of the road beers, only it's got a lot of flavor to it. Uh, we're definitely gonna have to put this on the list of breweries we go visit. I, I was gonna say, you've almost hurt my feelings here. <laughs> I, I, I feel like my standing as an expert in this is being questioned because you came to me with this and you said, hey, Kevin, what do you think about table? And I was like, who? Uh, I, you can't. There's a brewery here in Richmond. I had no idea about. It. So we are gonna come to the table. You be ready because the JKJ crew is coming, and we're gonna do a tasting. Who knows? Maybe we'll show up with a camera or something. This stuff. <laughs> I had true. a little sip of it earlier. It, Y'all are doing it right. Great job. Yeah, out it's there. excellent. Great job. It's an excellent yeah. beer. Yeah. All right. So we are. We have got the beers under control here. I, we are definitely ready for something. A nice springtime day. Javier. Tell me, tell me you got us a beautiful vino <laughs> to celebrate the coming flowers as they're blooming. What do you got over there for us? Well, I'll tell you what, a couple of, uh, I, got a, I got a cab this time, but uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was over at the uh, Caboose Wine and Cheese here in Ashland, and the visiting sommelier uh, introduced us to this wine here, and I, I had to grab it right away because it's called Luna. So, nice. one of our favorite tokens here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't own any Luna, then go just check it out. I can't tell you to go buy it, but yeah, go check it out. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, a lot of things with this thing. It's uh, from uh, Chalk Hill out in Australia, and it's about, uh, remember we were talking about Clare Valley a couple mm -hmm. of weeks ago, and it's just south of that, so just south of uh, Adelaide, Australia. Uh, I was looking on the map at uh, to see where Chalk Hill was, and uh, quite a few wineries out there. I mean, a, a lot of wineries in that uh, Chalk Hill Valley. Road trip. So yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah perfect. That's a that's a plane trip. <laughs> so uh, this bottle here again, it's a it's a cab, fourteen percent, uh, a little bit on the acidic side, definitely dry, uh, leans a little more on the tannic, and wouldn't you know, black currant. 
Oh, come on. I don't believe you. Yeah, black current. No, somebody, right. somebody point out black current. Somebody, <laughs> uh, somebody else said that when they say black current, you know, a lot of people I see, a lot of people also saying uh, it's got a little bit of chocolate uh, flavor to it. That's so a popular maybe, one. Maybe yeah. that's where we're going with this. Uh, mm -hmm. Like I said, dry uh, on the soft side. And uh, I said 14%, and it's about uh, $17 a bottle. So right in the. Right, that's right in the sweet spot. Right that's sweet good. Spot, Under right? 20 bucks. So yeah, it's, uh, we'll go with this. Uh, what would I pair it with? Absolutely uh, a glass. <laughs> there you go. I love it. That's Puerto Rico favorite. glass. That's my favorite thing to pair stuff with. Yeah. A glass. Let's go. Oh, beautiful. Well, hey, you know. One of the things that, that we had talked about we thought would really be an interesting conversation to bring up today is we've had several people where we've been out and about. We were out at a conference uh, last night, and we had some folks came up to us and asked us about some of the environmental concerns that people have when it comes to cryptocurrency. You see all these stories. It seems like people that are looking for something to dig at cryptocurrencies, their go-to now has become Oh, the environmental impact of mining cryptocurrencies, fellas. I, I know that we kind of we had we had several people that brought this up. Yeah. Um. And and yes, on the surface, it can be something to that, but it's like everything. It gets so much deeper, and there's a lot of ways that people have mitigated these these issues and these risks. I mean, what are what are y'all seeing, and what have you been reading about some of the some of the things that are going on with cryptocurrencies and how people are mining them and being more environmentally friendly. Yeah, there, you know, it definitely is have a, it's costly in the terms of power because you have to have electricity. I mean, these are basically just server farms. Uh, but as technology moves on with all kinds of things like vehicles, as an example, like vehicles in, you know, 1940 did not have great gas mileage, but today they do have great gas mileage. So, you know, technology will push the efficiency down the road, but there's all kinds of uh, places out there that have server farms that are costly for energy. I'll give one uh, company that starts with a G and ends with an E and we all use every day. Uh, and it's got server farms all over the place and they, they are costly for energy wise, but there's techniques that they're starting to come up with now to make them more energy friendly. Uh, like they're not doing this in China now, but in China there was a, they had server farms that were butted right up next to hydroelectric dams. So there was almost, you know, there's no carbon footprint with that one. Right. Uh, and Google and their, one of their main server farms is up next to Columbia river and they pull off the hydroelectric dams. And th these are the kind of techniques that they're going to use. Uh, Texas is big. JD was reading an article. what do you have on that one? Yeah, there's a company out there that, uh, you know, I was reading into this company years ago and their technique was to take capped oil wells mm -hmm. and, and there's a certain amount of gas that comes off these oil wells that just gets dispersed into the air and sometimes you'll you go by some of these oil plants and see all these flames coming off of these oh yeah oh, yeah nice. so they're mm -hmm. burning off the gas this excess gas well these guys are coming in with with some type of apparatus that they're going to put right on top of it and they're going to take that gas instead of it getting pushed into the uh, into the air these guys are taking it and they're going to use it repurpose it and send it now you know last i heard and we were reading about this today now they've got something like a hundred something other companies and con i mean oil companies that they're working with now so yeah. that's an incredible amount of oh, gas yeah. that these guys are going to recoup that's generally lost and now we have mining companies that are going hey we're going to tap into these guys and we're going to start using that and so now you have environmental impact in the other direction right so when you talk, start talking about how bad these guys are now well wait a minute so here's a company that's doing something good and these guys are going to link up with them and yeah. so instead of having some kind of environmental impact it's actually What's a game for yeah, us so there's yeah. a positive so, environmental impact yeah, yeah, so, negative. Definitely. so yeah. yeah so you know you hear that and again you know I, you say that and just the other day i was at work you know that people know i'm the crypto guy mm -hmm. and and that was the exactly the question why does bitcoin use so much energy you know so <laughs> you know and i went the other route i went into the whole proof of work and proof of stake and why some computers are burning and you yeah. know why are they working so hard and uh but the other question I pushed to them was, okay, so if we're going to be sitting here talking about Bitcoin miners, Ethereum miners, mining, period, then riddle me this. How come nobody ever talks about the banking industry? Mm -hmm. These huge buildings in the middle of a city 
these banks, these ATMs, people driving to and from work and yeah. all the energy <laughs> that's expended there. Oh, their server farms to keep up with your credit card bill. Yeah, 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 exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's disingenuous. I mean, I, I understand where they want to go with it. They, they just looking for some way to beat down cryptocurrency. And so the, the flavor of the day is, well, we got nothing to beat down with. You know, we were throwing terrorism and illicit transactions for years at them. And nobody seems to, it's not sticking because it wasn't any good uh, something with a two trillion dollar less than a two trillion dollar market cap i'm sorry yeah. you know there's a hell of a lot more 100 dollar bills and euro is running around than than bitcoin right now so yeah that's my well, the, that minor yeah. detail that you know you can yeah. track every transaction but yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that kind of, that kind that's of really, the way too yeah, yeah that kind of puts a real bummer so, and, and that's why we're here and that's that that is why we're here to educate people to understand this is the the the, the half truths that right, are yeah. always out there or the lack of information right we're going to throw this at you but we're not going to give you this other stuff here you know so that's the, why we say read 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 yeah the overriding theme is that you know if you talk about green energy just as an example like people that people want regulation to come in and force green on companies the fact is like in this context with uh server farms in whatever way if it's you know google or if it's you know crypto mining it, the energy that is not green is expensive, you know, like a hydroelectric dam is super cheap. You know, these they're using this natural gas resource. It's super cheap to do. If you're just buying electricity off the market, it's expensive. So if you kind of pull back the regulation, companies will find a better way to do it all by themselves if they're incentivized to do it with the with the market. So these techniques are they're less expensive and they're going to find their way to green anyway, just like the whole world has done. So if we can back off the regulation and just understand that everything that comes through the TV or through the Internet <laughs> is probably not you know, pure in its intent, I guess. Yeah, I, I'd love to see how much energy a, uh, an Amazon cloud. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Amazon servers. <laughs> no, servers are burning. No, none how much of us is probably, Google, yeah, how much is Google really burning? Of course, you don't hear them complaining about, you know, Bitcoin because they can't point the fingers. Yeah, like, Ooh, no. yeah. Look, don't be bad-mouthing them, okay? They show up here seven times a day dropping stuff off. And yeah. they, you know, so, yeah. <laughs> Go Amazon, big fan. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, uh, you know, one of the other things I thought it was interesting you just said about the things you see on TV. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've been watching some of the events unfold on TV recently over the last few weeks to our lovely neighbors to the north there in Canada. Um, th those boys seem to be having some issues going on up there. And uh, yeah. so some interesting threats, and I guess it's beyond threats now. I guess it's some promises that have been made by the Canadian government and some of the yeah. some of the leaders of these different provinces that they're coming in and, and uh, targeting people that are supporting the, the truckers and the protesters. Right, yeah. uh, what, what have y'all seen? Because I know, I know they threatened and they have locked out some people's bank accounts. They were going after businesses. So, you know, one of the main things that I thought was, was interesting was in that list of all the things they were going to do, I believe it was Trudeau that said he was going to come after people's cryptocurrency, too. I wonder, <laughs> wonder how that's going for old Justin. Yeah, I don't uh, think it went well for him. I have not seen one instance where they were able to shut down a crypto wallet at all. And there's been there's tons of examples. You can just watch the news for five minutes and find out with, you know, some single mom got her account shut down because she donated 50 bucks to the truckers. Um, that that stuff is as real, but they have not been able to touch the crypto. I mean, the the uh, the government overreach has not been able to touch the crypto accounts. And that's something that's really heartening if you're a crypto person because the you know as we talk about in our uh, podcast that we discussed inflation and stuff like that the government has all kinds of levers that they can pull to tweak our inflation and um, but they can't do anything with this crypto stuff they're tr they want to badly but in this case they were never able to go in and and do that so it's super interesting to me and that's a great point if you want to go read that paper about inflation and how that works <laughs> go to jkjdigitalassets.com sign up for that premium membership it is four dollars and 99 cents <laughs> per month that's it Man. that is it you can't go to mcdonald's for that trust me i know i stopped this morning and got a mcmuffin and a cup of coffee and it cost me more than that so <laughs> i should have just spent my money on a jkjdigitalassets.com premium membership instead of that 
lovely breakfast I had. So, hey, $4.99 a month. Go sign up for it. And, hey, make sure you smash that subscribe button on YouTube. Make sure that you're following JKJ Digital Assets there. Jump in on Instagram, too. Come find us. Javier, you know, one of the things that I really thought, how could they possibly shut down people's crypto accounts? And, and I, was, I sat there, and I really, really tried to think about it. I was like, okay, if they wanted to shut down one of my accounts, how would they go about doing it? I can't think of how they would do it. Other than shutting down the entire exchange. Well, you know, if the exchange moves out, I mean, think about this. You've got instances here, uh, Binance, for instance. You know, they weren't playing by regulatory rules here in the U.S. So they were asked to leave. You know, they were they were pretty much shut down. So if you try to open up a Binance account, you know, they'll come back and say, hey, they look at your address and you so you can't open up an account. But if you already own an account, you know, there's ways to get around that to recoup your money, bring it back and do whatever you need to do. So the, the big thing for me with cryptocurrencies, we're talking it's it's peer to peer. Um, so for somebody to shut down, if I want to send John over across the table, you know, and I've got uh, some politician over here yelling, you know, we're cutting you guys off. They can't stop me yeah. from doing that. I mean, unless you somehow... Okay, you can go ahead and confiscate my cell phone if you want to, or my iPad, or my PC, or my hideaway phone, or my other hideaway laptop, or you're not going, you can't. Now, you can see those numbers going across, right? Mm -hmm. But you can't sit there, you cannot stop, so they can't get into your account. Uh, same thing with Qcoin. Qcoin just decided, okay, we're not going to play anymore in the U.S., but if you already own an account... They, then they can't stop it so right. i mean for them to go literally go in and start yanking it takes a lot of money so they're all they're saying is okay well you're not going to be able to do the same you saw the same thing with blockfi just recently right the sec just uh, said hey the securities and blah blah, blah we're going to sue you okay so that blockfi lost but if, if you look and see what's going on in there if you already own an account you're still making interest at BlockFi. You can't open up a new account with them until things clear. But that seems to be the w what's happening. So when I hear somebody say that we're going to shut down cryptocurrency, I, I generally already know that I'm looking at a moron. <laughs> Sorry, because <laughs> you can't do it. You can't. You're not going to do it. Though so you don't know cryptocurrency, you don't understand yeah. it. You don't. You don't know wallets. You don't know peer to peer. You sound really tough, but no, it's not going to happen. Well, you go back and look at another one of our videos, the uh, the private key, public key video. It's one. It was one of our first ones, and it's free on YouTube. You can go watch it uh, for free. But that one talks about the public key and the private key. You can't really touch. Your private key is yours. It's some. It's on something that you own. You they can't come in and take that from yeah. you. Uh, another thing is that the way the IRS approaches uh, crypto, they view it as property. Well, in our in our in the United States government, you cannot take property without due process. So you are protected by our Constitution and our Bill of Rights for the, your property that you have. So they can't just come and take it without due process. There, there's all kinds of things. It's super interesting exercise that's happening right now, trying to reach out and push people in one direction or another ideology wise. And they just, this is one area where they, they strain and they struggle, but they cannot push people with crypto. And that's, that's one of the good things. I heard this analogy. I'm not going to take credit for this today, but I, I heard this analogy that talked, you know, it was like a what is crypto thing. And the person described it crypto as money and it's a check and balance. It, you know, we're never going to have an environment where crypto is the only currency out there, but it does serve as a great check and balance for our system right now. And I really enjoy that idea. And I want to go down that road further. Globally. But, yeah, globally. It's a, yeah, it's a check and balance globally. So uh, this is where, you know, in, in this case with Canada, we're getting a check. Like they're being checked. No, you cannot come and seize this property. It's independent from any of the forces of government. So it, it's super interesting to watch these things happen. All right. Yeah. Well, that's been um, that's been a really good good discussion today. You know, the one other thing I think we'd be remiss if we didn't bring up just a little bit. Um, obviously, you know, there's a conflict going on right now. Russia has has gone into the Ukraine, and uh, you know, depending on which side of the fence you're on, if you're on Russia's side, they're trying to uh, free up some some sovereign folks that are trapped there. <laughs> if you're uh, it's a freedom you know, exercise, <laughs> if you're the rest of the world, yeah. you watch them invade another country. But but one of the things that we did see today was obviously as as all of this played out. 
we saw the financial markets, it, you know, really, really shift and really, really move. What did y'all notice that was kind of interesting with the crypto market? Because I know when, when I started looking first thing this morning, there were all these headlines about, oh, Ethereum and Bitcoin have just crashed because, mm -hmm. of, because of Russia's actions. Yeah. What, did you, what have y'all seen? Well, I haven't seen, you know, I tell you what, last night I started looking at my account and I, I saw it, noticed a dip, right? And again, when we, we talk cryptocurrency, right, the, the, these dips, 20, 25%, uh, you know, yeah. it's, it's part of the part of the uh, the price to, to, to play in this field. But uh, I said, okay, well, well, here we go. But at that time, there was no invasion going on, right? Yeah. We've been talking that uh, the news agencies that, uh, you know, this is going to happen. And so I think part of that was maybe already priced in just mm -hmm. a tad. If you go back a couple of weeks, mm -hmm. uh, of course, cryptocurrency has been coming down quite a bit. But I think there was somewhere about a 5 five to 7% hit within the last couple of weeks. So I, I want to say it was kind of priced in already. Mm -hmm. So when I woke up this morning, I looked at my account, oh, okay, here we go, right? Reading the news and looking at the crypto. When I hit the gym, uh, half an hour later, I yeah. swear, half an hour later, I'm sitting there and I'm looking at my phone and my account was starting to come back up. Not only that, but I'm looking at, you know, my, some of my favorite stuff, Luna. And uh, <laughs> it was not affected. In fact, the price on of, of Terra Station Luna, their token, was on the rise. Uh, the other one that sits on there on Terra Station Anchor Protocol, on its way up. In fact, today it's sitting. I think right now at three dollars and eight cents. It's higher than it's been in the last like month yeah. or so. So, yeah. uh, seems like if you if you move over to Asia and those and that side, you know, for them this this has not been affected at all. Uh, Interesting. Well, the I mean, the, the big thing is, you know, lots of times the, the newsy kind of events will drive the market, whether it's stock market or crypto market. But th this is a time where people will see the, the dollar inflating or whatever currency around the world you've got. But they'll see that inflation like most times the two markets will drive together. But this one time right here, you started to see cryptocurrency that went the other direction. Like you talked about Luna, that thing crawled up. It dipped a little bit in the beginning, but then it crawled up all day and it's at the highest it's been all year right now. So another one anchor on there, it, anchor never dipped. That's another uh, token that's on the Terra network. It didn't dip at all. Uh, the important thing to note is like the business application that lives behind these things. If you have a coin, uh, I mean, one of my least favorite ones is this Dogecoin thing. Like Dogecoin doesn't really have a solid business application behind it. Yeah. It just, it just fell hard. I mean, it fell harder than even I think Ethereum and Bitcoin did because there's nothing behind it. But if you go to the other side of that conversation, you talk about Terra Station, Luna, Anchor, they have an unbelievably solid business concept behind what they're doing. And it's also like geographically where they're at is important because the, geographically the terror station is mostly in the far east and this isn't really an area that's uh, too affected by what's going on so in fact nothing on the terror station network really was affected apollo astro mm -hmm. uh orion money i mean all even, those are solid even mine went up yeah. <laughs> mine <laughs> crawled all day today crawled up okay mine also that's that's yeah. interesting <laughs> we're not laughing at mine at the token we just it's just been beaten down quite yeah, a bit. If that's even coming good. up, then that kind of gives you a real message there. Yeah. Well, guys, this has been a great conversation. Um, I've really enjoyed it. I, I do have to say that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go do a little self-reflection and, you know, because I don't know if anybody caught that, but I talked about this morning being at McDonald's for my sausage McMuffin and JD <laughs> talked about this morning being at the gym, but <laughs> I don't care. I'm going to go downstairs and get a piece of pound cake and I'm going to get another beer. So hell yeah. All right. So anyway, hey, make sure you smash that subscribe button. Get out there and join up. Make sure you're following us on YouTube. Make sure that you go sign up for that premium membership, $4.99. That's all it is. Go to jkjdigitalassets.com. You are going to see a plethora of white papers, videos, all kinds of information out there that will help you take those steps that you're out there looking for. Uh, again, folks, Instagram, we got lots of stuff out there on that. Hey, one more time, thanks to the folks at Peak for this beautiful blueberry. Thanks to Table Brewing. Thanks to Luna. Wits in. Chalk Hill. Chalk, Chalk Hill, Hill for the Luna. Yeah. Great stuff. Great stuff. So, folks, again, thanks for being with us. We really enjoyed it. 
Come back, see us next time. Make sure that you're that you're subscribed to our YouTube channel. Then you'll get that notification when the next one comes up. So go get out there, get signed up. And hey, whatever you do, do it well. See ya. <laughs> 